The capercaillie is one of the country's most spectacular birds. It's the largest grouse in the world and is often referred to as the horse of the pine woods. Sadly, this famous bird is in danger of becoming extinct in Scotland, and this could happen in the next decade or so if we don't act now. As a nation, we have an obligation to do everything in our power to save the capercaillie. Important capper sites have been identified throughout Scotland, particularly in the Cairngorms National Park. Through the EC Life Nature funded project, Urgent Conservation Management for Scottish Capper Cayley, we aim to do just that. Things have been looking bleak for the capper since the 1970s. From a strong population of an estimated 20,000 birds, there are now fewer than 2,000 capper. So what's to blame for this decline? Well, a number of factors have combined to have an effect on the birds. Such large birds need up to 100 hectares of pine wood each. In Scotland, pine wood habitat is often degraded by deer and sheep. For capper Cayley, there is also the issue of predation. We're in one of the life project sites here today where the forest has been restructured to benefit Capercaillie in terms of the habitat. However, it's quite a busy place in terms of the public. There's a campsite nearby. So we've got lots of what are called generalist predators here, crows and foxes that do very well because they eat human rubbish, etc. They eat rabbits that live near humans. So large numbers of these generalist predators come into the forest and they eat Capercaillie eggs and chicks. Therefore, it's necessary for us to control these animals. And deer fences have also contributed to the capercaillie's demise over the years. Fences are a risk to capercaillie because the birds don't see them particularly well, especially in forests, and as they're flying through the, the woodland at high speed, they can strike them and it can kill them. Furthermore, disturbance by humans in a series of cold, wet springs and summers has reduced breeding success in recent years. Also, changes in spring weather patterns are thought to be affecting food availability at this crucial time in the breeding season. Through the European Commission's Life Nature programme, a range of public and private interests have come together to try to halt the decline. Highland Birchwoods, based on the Black Isle, is leading the £5 million project, with support from the Scottish Executive, Forestry Commission Scotland, Forest Research, Scottish Natural Heritage, the RSPB, the Cairngorms National Park Authority and 24 private land-owning interests. So what's this group of agencies and private individuals doing on the ground that is really going to make a difference? Well, habitat needs to be managed on a big scale to help Capper Cayley. For Capper, the ideal home is in the pine woods. The Life Project has been very helpful to Forestry Commission in that it's given us a focus to work on the, the nature of the habitats within the forest. And one of the, the things that we've really been concentrating on is to, to look at how we change the forest crops to make sure that the brood habitat in terms of the vegetation and the habitat uh, underneath the trees is, is just as we would want it. So that's involved changing the trees, encouraging the light levels for blaeberry. Blaeberry is the, is the food plant of uh, a whole series of insects that young capercaillie love to eat and they are absolutely critical to the development of capercaillie during their early weeks of life. Improvements to habitat can also be made by swiping the heather with a tractor or heather burning, which encourages the plants needed by capercaillie to regenerate. The threat to capper numbers from deer fences has been much reduced to stop the fences being as much of a risk to Capper Cayley, we're either removing them completely where possible or marking them with high visibility barriers or wooden droppers to try and increase the visibility as the Capper Cayleys are flying through the forest. Predation is another issue for the horse of the pine woods despite its size and sometimes aggressive nature. 
foxes are generally shot uh, and the crows are generally captured in, in cages and then dispatched humanely and there's lots of scientific evidence that shows that doing these sorts of things, controlling these generalist predators is beneficial for capercaillie productivity. The intention is not to eradicate these animals but just to reduce the pressure on capercaillie in these woods. When we are restructuring these forests we also create cover for capercaillie by pulling over trees or creating piles of brush as you can see around me here and this gives capercaillie chicks and adults places to hide when predators come around. So basically it's a two-pronged way of combating predation. Much has been made of the impact of humans on capercaillie. Recreation in the form of mountain biking or horse riding perhaps. And what about dog walkers? There is increasing evidence to show that disturbance does have a detrimental impact on these birds. The best advice is act responsibly in areas which are likely to be key habitats for capercaillie. Keep dogs on leads or under very close control at all times. Avoid disturbing the birds, stick to the paths, especially during the breeding season. Where we'd have competing priorities like recreation and kind of conservation, it's about skillful management to make sure that we direct the recreation into areas where the impact on kind of features of interest for conservation is minimised. One of the major successes of the LIFE project has been to stimulate a large amount of additional work for the species beyond the project timescale. This work will be carried out by public and private estates and relies on the goodwill and participation of everyone. This continued effort will hopefully ensure that future generations will walk in Scotland's forests with the prospect of seeing the horse of the woods, an icon amongst Scottish wildlife.